Okay, so then I suppose welcome to the Exploit World Tour. We're here with uh, more people than just in the server right now, in the survival server. But some can, can't can join us y just yet, maybe later. Uh, but so on the server right now we have Void, Tartar, or Tartar, I don't know, <laughs> and Lee. And joining us there will be, let me check. Okay, so we have J2 in our voice chat. And we will maybe have uh, Baden, maybe, joining us. And Rufus Atticus. And so we'll see about that. Um, maybe I say we can all grab a speed horse that will make it easier to navigate around. So I guess our speed horse is kind of your your primary method of travel in the server. Mm, I wouldn't necessarily say so. It's a signature method of travel, we could say that, because yeah. it is quite fun, I would say at least. I agree. At least that's what I prefer. So much fun. I don't think I've ever done this before. Okay, so I suppose we can start at the world spawn. So yeah, we have the world spawn right here inside of the perimeter. And so if you're wondering about the perimeter size, it is 18 times 9 chunks. And one specialty of this perimeter is that one half of it is a ticking area. So we decided to add a ticking area through a command, so it is not vanilla, so to speak. But um, we did so because we thought it would be an interesting challenge and we, we could integrate various contraptions with a ticking area and it is quite similar to the Java Edition spawn chunks so we thought it would be interesting and so for now here there's nothing really special but we're planning to have a entire main storage which is hexadecimal encoded that will be permanently loaded inside of the ticking area so we can head over to the mob switch which is right in front of us and so the mob switch is pretty simple we're just using dogs and the dogs are pushed in and out of the ticking area so the mob switch is built right on the chunk border that separates the non-ticking area and the ticking area half of the perimeter and so if we just flick this lever you can see them all just being pushed to the side, and then they would be outside of the ticking area. I assume that um, because you know this mob switch activates when you know, everything's simulated or whatever, if someone's in the the spawn perimeter, does that mean that you don't get spawns anywhere else in the server? Yes, that is correct. So you would need to unload these exact chunks to make sure that mobs mob spawns occur elsewhere. Uh, let's see, what else is there to show here? Um, oh Jesus, why um... is an enderman? <laughs> <laughs> After came out of nowhere. That was uh... random. So the iron farm is one of six iron farm designs. Uh, the design is by Rufus Atticus, and it is using Hey Old Guy Tech, which is one of our former members. And yeah, so this is... A relatively simple design but it works really well so I think the rate per module is 384 per hour it is a free-range iron farm so that means they just walk around freely which is quite useful because in order to get this farm going you only need two villagers and you give them food and then it fills up by itself and it doesn't make more than 20 villagers, which is great. You can passively get a lot of iron, because we decided that this area would be frequently visited. And so that way you don't need to actively AFK to get iron, and you can just passively get it. <laughs> I love this scene. It's all kind of scuttling along with the, the legs moving way too quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a little elevator here, you just press the button and it opens a jet door and you can get up with the bubble column. Okay, so the pyramid is one of our earlier builds. I think it was built by Jodolf. Jodolf, as you might guess, is one of our members. This used to be a combo iron farm training hall. Now it's just a training hall. And yeah, we just have a bunch of librarians here. Let's take a look around on the other side. So we have a tiny bit of emeralds here. I think that should last us for a while. Tiny bit of emeralds, yeah. The clerics were put here recently by Lee, so that we have a source of redstone dust. 
and we have a bunch here already. Do the uh, do the waterlogged chests underneath the villagers stop them from jumping up? Well, I know yeah. that water prevents them from delinking or something like that. Well, that's news to me. I never even saw those chests being waterlogged below there. This build here, this tower is just a villager breeder. Nothing much to say about it, except that there's a ton of villagers down here. And let's head over to the giant mushroom farm. So this is really well designed. Could you speak a bit about that? I think it was it designed by Jinzuo again. Okay, so um, the decoration was built by Jinzuo. It's not quite done. I'm not sure if he has any plans to finish it. I think he said that currently he doesn't plan on continuing it. But yeah, so what Tartar said is, is right, and what Lee said is right. It's a three-year-old design, but it still works very well. It is designed by the one and only JX67, which is a bedrock tech legend. He doesn't play it anymore, or at least hasn't published anything in a long time. But the way it works is that it uses flying machines to push the uh, brown mushroom head into a cube maker or you can then manually harvest it. So you just turn off the farm with the lever, and then you just place the brown mushrooms. And the flying machine will then push it all away. Right. Oh, I almost got pushed away. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the brown mushroom head just gets pushed there. And the stem also gets pulled away. Okay, let's move on to the next location, which is the small desert village over there. We have a honey farm here. It's quite simple, nothing too complicated. So let's not stay on that too long. The main attraction is not here, where the honey farm is, but in that hole over there. So this is a multi-spawner farm. Three of them can be activated at once. Uh, we used that in early game quite a lot. Rufus Atticus found it using our bedrock. Three spawners that can be activated at once. There's one skeleton and two zombie spawners. And the one over there is another skeleton spawner. We don't actually have anything more to visit by horse. Actually, we do have one more thing close to spawn. Something that Lee built. And it's the potion brewer. Which I'm personally very fond of because it looks really cool. This is a potion brewer. I believe it automatically refills itself. I'm not entirely familiar with the design of this potion brew, but I believe it is, well, it's encoded for sure. There's a bunch of rails down there. As I was saying, uh, it's encoded. I'm not sure in what form. It should be binary, right? I think. Binary, okay, okay. And that's how it knows what ingredients to pick, which is over here. And all of these ingredients have dedicated chests to them. Does this give you every potion in the game? Because there's, there's quite a lot here. Mm, I don't think so. I know for a fact that there's a bunch of potions that are not in splash form. And I yeah. suppose some potions are so obscure that we didn't really bother. Then we can head to the next location, which is the creeper farm. Uh, you might notice there's the portal at the top. And the reason for that is that this is, or rather was, a ghost portal. And the idea of it was basically to build a portal that crashed the server. And when you load back into the game, the game would still have the portal exit data, but the portal itself would not be built. And so the advantage of that is that mobs that would spawn through that portal wouldn't be standing on the obsidian, but would be falling straight down. If you take a look at the chest, uh, there's a bunch of gunpowder. Reason for that is that the farm doesn't actually work anymore due to various things being patched, but we stocked up on gunpowder so that we have a lot left for mostly rockets, maybe some TNT if we need to. This looks like just a big plane of smooth stone, but if we fly over here, we can see that it's actually a gigantic half sphere. And to be specific, it's a radius of 54 blocks half sphere. The spawning radius used to be 54 blocks. Yeah, it was built around that. At the bottom, there's a bunch of portal tiles. We place them in a checkerboard pattern because you can't actually place them right next to each other. We could have also just placed portals and water leading into it. 
but we didn't because portal tiles are cool, I suppose. So it, this was actually a, well, is a pretty primitive creeper farm. If you look at it on the state of creeper farms now, but it did the job. And if we're talking rates, I believe the original full sphere was going to do a hundred stacks per hour. Which, considering this is a fairly inefficient, only 25% density stripe layout, is fairly respectable. So I suppose half of that is about 50. Maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. I'm not quite sure. So the farm is rather primitive. It's not too complicated. I believe Ken built this. And as you can see, it's just water and a bunch of portal tiles. This is where the rabbit farm is. I believe Yolov built this. It's interestingly made entirely out of gold blocks. I don't know why, but it consists of a trident killer on the nether side. And we can head over to the overall side to take a look at what it looks like. Actually, let's take a look at all of the water here. And all of the terrain below is still grass. I'm not sure what biome this is, but I suppose it has some advantage to farming rabbits. And so Yodov just built a bunch of flying machines and just spammed water all over. The spawning platforms are fairly basic, so there's one square right above you, and there is a sort of circle on the same level as the player. So the surface spawns of the rabbits would actually end up on the lower uh, set of portals as well. And that would work by placing carpets on top of the portals, and that would transfer the surface spawns down to the second layer. But as Tartar said, yeah, the bottom uh, set of portals will not work anymore, which means the rates are essentially halved. I've talked on and on about this rabbit farm, but haven't about the, pur uh, the purpose. It was mainly to get the, what are they called? Rabbit paws. And so I suppose we fed that into the potion brewer. So the, the whole, this whole farm is just for the purpose of fueling what, speed potions or something. Exactly. Okay, so. As you might have guessed already, this location was found by Rufus Atticus using our bedrock. We have three skeleton spawners in very close proximity. Um, I will turn on the trident killer real quick. So it just involves you throwing a trident at the piston. Then this observer clock will uh, pulse those pistons um, in an alternating fashion. Uh, okay, you got some food already. Uh, let's turn it on. If I turn it on, then all of these lamps will turn off and they will be pushed up into the trident killer. Uh, yes, the skeleton spawners are really close to each other. It's very impressive, to be honest. It's just our bedrock magic. We thought many things were impossible, but as we're seeing, they are possible. Um, while I'm turning on the mob switch, I can already talk about this farm a bit. So it's more or less the same thing as the rabbit farm you saw earlier, but it's built in a, a mushroom island farm, which you might have guessed since it's a mushroom farm. Anyway, you can see the signature gray water. Okay, I think we're all up here. Apparently there's a thunderstorm right now. So this is the exact same idea as the rabbit farm, or rather the rabbit farm is the same idea as the mushroom farm, because we do use this a lot more. And this is actually the server's main source of food. Okay, <laughs> we can hear the mushroom sounds already. Oh my is the trident killer on? Oh boy, it might not be. Okay, turn it on. Why can I still hear the... Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Oh, okay, wait. So something bizarre happened. A skeleton horse trap spawned. Yeah, I want to save the brown mushroom, but it's going to be kind of hard, and I, th I think it's gone already. So I think the skeleton horses are blocking the the mushrooms from coming out. So yeah, okay, they, they were. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is done here is that they fall through lava, so that when they die, they drop cooked steak instantly. Wait, did I just hear another thunderstorm? It's a lot happening what? Right now. Oh. It may be, I'm not quite sure. Oh, what the <laughs> it, it, yeah. Okay, you know, oh, this is actually really cool. interesting. <laughs> so I guess we just discovered something on our tour that <laughs> you can make a lightning bolt farm. 
Yes. So now there's a bunch of steak there. If you'd like some, you can take some. It's up for grabs. 